you want, the anatomy of blood vessels. And, uh, this is where we left off. Just after fetal circulation. Ah, we got this. The um, anatomy of the mole triangle. This is the groin region. You can actually look, look at this model right here. This is all one you know right there. called the femoral triangle. And the femoral triangle, let's see if I draw like that. Well, what I'm drawing here is um, that side of the triangle is the inguinal ligament. The other two are borders of muscles. The medial border is the adductor longus. The lateral border is formed by sartorius. Those are the borders. But the contents, which is what I would have you identify, are the femoral nerve, artery, and vein, from lateral to medial. <clears throat> so to orient yourself, this is medial. <clears throat> there's my adductor longus muscle. And then there's, uh, crossing over it is the uh, sartorius. So it doesn't show it, but the ligament will run up here. And then so from lateral to medial, the yellow nerve, red artery, the V is the vein. If you're dissecting the thigh region, after you remove the skin and sub Q, um, you have what's called the fasciolata. And there's a superficial vessel on top of the fasciolata I want you to be able to identify. It runs from the medial aspect of the ankle all the way up to the saphenous opening in this same groin region. So note the great saphenous vein is it's the longest vein in the body at the lower extremity. Great saphenous vein. Okay, so I said it runs from medial ankle. <coughs> I mean, all the way up the leg, the thigh, into that right there, what you see pictured. Drained into uh, femoral vein. In the inguinal region. saphenous vein not to be confused with femoral vein. If you look at the two side by side, the saphenous vein is on top of the fasciolata. When they illustrate it here, they, they cut it right there. So that's the great saphenous vein cut draining into femoral vein. I usually tag the femoral vein within the femoral triangle, okay, right next to the artery and the nerve. The great saphenous vein, I could tag it anywhere on the um, lower extremity. Okay, so there's a model showing the region. There's, there's the femoral, um, um, I'm sorry, artery and vein. Let me try to get the words out there. So is the green one there? The green one is actually um, lymphatics. So I think the color of the nerve is gray on this model here. So it's always from lateral to medial, uh, nerve, artery, and vein. Now there's um, some other um, arteries that I want you to know. And this figure traces out the arteries. So 
So I thought it might be a good idea to trace it out, just draw it right on the picture here. So I'm going to start with my inguinal ligament landmark, because that's where the femoral artery continues on um, from the external iliac artery. There's my inguinal ligament. So this, this ligament, underneath it, going up all the way to here, as far as I can go. This is the external, this one here. That, that's the external iliac. right side. When it goes under the inguinal ligament, the name changes to femoral. What I usually do, I just, I just look for the femoral head. Like, oh, yeah, I know it's femoral now, because they don't always show you the inguinal ligament. There's a lot of branches around here. We don't have to know those or the epigastrics. Um, but we'll just kind of know this as the name changes to from External iliac continues on as the more artery. The artery doesn't change, just the name. The first branches I want you to know, this big branch coming off right there. That first branch coming off right there. Try to get a number three in there. That, that's the deep femoral. Be profound is to be deep. So the artery is also known as profunda femoris. It's the same name. Okay. Profound means deep. Profunda femoris artery. So the same, same artery, same name. Now, off the deep femoral, you see this kind of arterial anastomosis going around the neck of the femur. Right around there. And it's going to anastomose with this other one there. Lines go behind the bone. Okay, so you see how it just loops around? Now, um, they're labeled right there. It's lateral and medial circumflex femoral. Okay. So this one and this. So they're coming off on e either end. One goes around this way and one comes going around that way. I'm going to go four and five. And I'm going to indent because they're coming off the deep for more. Lateral. Medial. Circumflex. Femoral. The word circumflex is used because they're making a circumference around the femoral neck and they're anastomosing with each other. They form a loop. And they have the same name, just one's lateral and one's medial. And I'm going to put a star next to these. These two, I, I like to use this picture for it if I were to use it on the lab graphical. I'm not saying I'm going to, but if I do, I just like this picture 
because I, I found them on our models and I don't like the way they model it. They, they, don't, they don't show them and ask the most thing around the formal back. Okay, but those little branches, the only branches you gotta know. The deep formal will continue on and give off a bunch more branches, but you don't gotta know them. So I'll just kind of stop there with the deep femoral. But let's continue to follow the femoral artery. It's the main artery of the lower extremity, but it has to get from the front of the thigh to the back of the thigh. And so if you follow it down, it's gonna go through this structure here called the adductor canal. When it goes through there, it'll um, pass to the back of the leg. Um, I gotta erase my picture. It passes to the back of the leg to the popliteal region. So I'm writing for more artery. Um, passes through. Adductor canal. the popliteal fossa. That's the, I'll just call that posterior knee. That's the region. The patella, the kneecap, is the front of the knee. The popliteal fossa is the back of the knee. So that's what you see there. goes through the seductor canal, and then it passes through the adductor hiatus, and then you're in the back of the knee. Uh, so the adductor hiatus, that's actually the real um, hole, if you will, of how you get to the back of the knee. So the ductor hiatus is how the artery passes from anterior to posterior. Knee. So I underlined hiatus, not canal. I think the hiatus is the one I want you to know, because that's actually how it gets from front to the back. So when you're in the back of the knee, what you can see from the back is that it's going to branch again. And um, let me erase this here. branches into the anterior and the posterior uh, tibial artery. So from this picture here, let me write it out first what I just said. So look for the femoral, I can spell this one, femoral artery branches into anterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery, and 
It doesn't happen until you get to the popliteal region. So when you get to the posterior knee, the name changes to popliteal artery. I said, oh gosh, because <laughs> this should be popular already. So the entire time you're on the anterior aspect, the more artery. As soon as you pass the hiatus, call it popliteal, and then it branches the anterior posterior tubule. So we got that right. So let's look at the back of the knee from the back. And uh, this is a picture of a model. I'm teaching the picture as an illustration to look clearer. The back of the knee is a diamond-shaped depression. And if you were to dissect away, you could see the muscles, the hamstrings. Um, I would ask you to identify those. But the floor of the, the popliteal vein and artery are right there. The nerves are um, the, the, the common fibular and the tibial, I want to ask you the nerves. Just know the popliteal artery. One vein I'll have you know here is between the gastroc heads is the small saphenous vein draining in the, into popliteal veins. So that's something you should know. Small this vein. Notice it's between the heads of gastrocnemius. Now gastrocnemius, that's your major, <coughs> major calf muscle. writing it drains in the popliteal vein. Here's the back of the knee. There's the adductor hiatus. That's my landmark. Now I know to call this artery the popliteal artery. When it gets just past the popliteal region, there's the branch point I want you to know. If the branch stays on the posterior tibial uh, region, That's the posterior tibial artery. The artery is named after the bone. And this branch is going anterior. Okay, So that's why I had that previous slide. This right here. So on this model, remove a muscle, and you'll find the anterior tibial artery. It kind of um, emerges through this little space right there. This membrane between tib and fib is called the interosseous membrane, but there's a hole right at the top where the anterior tibial artery it basically comes anteriorly. And you can view it from the front. So let me write that down. And that's usually where I like to tag it from the front, not the back, this first one. So I said that this one emerges through the interosseous membrane. Of the leg. Let's remember that in anatomy, the leg is the region between the knee and the ankle. So look for it anteriorly, hence the name. So you can follow the posterior and the anterior tibial arteries all the way down to the foot. There are more branches, but I usually just stop there in your study guide. Okay. I'm 
back to where I was. This is where I was. Again, look for the first branch in the popliteal region. On this picture, students always get confused and they want to identify the fibular artery, but that's not what you're responsible for. Know, know the anterior tibial artery going through the inner osseous membrane to the front, and the one that stays posterior is the posterior tibial. It takes you all the way down to the leg. So that finishes the arteries of the lower limb. Uh, here's another picture from the atlas. And what I say here is the popliteal artery ends by dividing into two terminal branches, which we've listed. They, they begin just inferior to the popliteus muscle, which is right here. That's kind of a landmark. So uh, that, that's kind of how you know that, that branch right there. I mean, you can't see where they go, but if you can identify popliteus, that's usually where that branching occurs. So I'll put that as a side note. Occurs just inferior to popliteus. So that could be one clue, but you have to be able to identify that muscle. The other clue is, if you can see it, go to the front, right? Because it's going to go through that membrane and go to the front. So all, those are all the clues to figure it out. Make sure you're looking at the right part. It is not hard. Are you looking at the front of the leg? What are you going to call it? Anterior tibial. If I get at the back, it's posterior tibial. So I don't think that's too difficult for you. I want to move to the upper uh, limb. And for the upper limb, you got to talk about first shoulder and axilla. We all know where our shoulder is. The axilla is your armpit. So just to be sure we're clear, you have to abduct the arm to get a good view of the axilla, right? Now, I'm not going to ask you to identify the boundaries of the axilla, but it's the anatomy of the armpit. The anterior fold, a fold is skin over muscle. So you've got the pec muscles in there, pec major, pec minor. In there, mainly you have um, lats and teres major. So this is one thing you should know. Do you see that line of the fold? Uh, ter teres major is actually one of the landmarks um, we'll talk about. So that's one of the places where the artery changes the name. Uh, the medial wall, you got serratus anterior and ribs. The lateral wall coming out of here, you can have um, some muscles like coracal brachialis and the humerus. Well, anyways, this is a good um, picture to start with because it shows the artery coming out of the chest, into the neck, and into the axillary region, and down into the arm. And the ar again, the artery doesn't change, you know, just the name. The Flavian axillary brachial. Okay, so this one might be used to trace. And on here, I want to emphasize the landmarks, where the name changes. So you start right here. Okay, you should be able to identify where we start right there. You got these three branches coming off the aortic arch. You should know the first one, right? Brachiocephalic trunk. So we start in the chest, that's where the heart is, and you have to get out of the neck into the uh, axillary region down into the arm. So we start here. Okay, that's our brachiocephalic trunk. So this first branch. So we just follow this. This is subclavian. Now the subclavian artery, you can talk about for head and neck, because it's one of the major arteries of the neck. And there, there's branches of the subclavian uh, that I talked about. I mean, really quick, it's vertebral, uh, internal thoracic, and thyro cervical trunk, but you could go back and look at your notes. That was already covered. But the landmark is uh, the lateral border of the first rib. There's first rib right there. I 
was kind of drawn in. It was the cost of cartilage. Lateral border. First rib. That first rib, when you pass there, you're going to go under the clavicle, and then you become axillary artery. Okay, so you pass that landmark, the name changes from subclavian to axillary. Now the axillary artery is going to run underneath another landmark, the pectoralis minor muscle. So the pectoralis minor muscle, I mean, it starts up here, it originates up on the coracoid process, and it inserts on three ribs, boom, 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 three to five. <clears throat> I use that as a landmark when I dissect. I always tell students, well, okay, remove pec major, look for pec minor. Okay, you found pec minor, now start to look for this artery that runs underneath it real useful tool for me. So it runs underneath it and it's going to continue to go down. Now the axillary artery does have some branches I want you to know. And do you see this? Well this muscle creates three parts for the axillary artery. There's a part of the axillary artery before it. It goes underneath it and then like is lateral to it. So medial, deep to it, and then um, after it or lateral to it, three parts of the axillary artery. Relative to pec minor. Three parts, and just call them first, second, third parts of the axillary artery relative to pec minor. to, well, pectoralis minor. Let's use the full and complete name in lecture. Let's look at the third part, the part that, you know, lateral to the pec minor, because that part has three branches that I want you to know. They are... Um, the anterior, posterior, circumflex femoral, the circumflex humoral, that's two, and the third one is subscapular. So let me list them under here. So you have anterior, circumflex humoral, almost wanted to say femoral because we just talked about those. But now we're talking about the bone of the arm. How many bones are in the arm? One. What is it? The humerus. What's the arm in anatomy? The region between shoulder and elbow. That's it. And it's confusing because in everyday language, the whole thing is your arm. Right? But in anatomy, it's just here to here. Okay. One bone, humerus. Bone, anterior, posterior. You got two in one shot. And then third one, subscapular. Subscapular is the largest branch of this region. Okay, 
so um, on the picture there. There's a branch coming off. We'll do a better job tracing it. This one coming off, it's going around the front. Um, so this one here, I'll label it A. You see why it's the anterior one? It's passing on the front side. But the one passing on the back side is the posterior circumflex model. This one here, it's going to pass backwards. But it's going to meet the one on the front. And you form an anastomosis there. Okay, so this one I'll label it B. Okay, and I'll label C, this big branch coming here. That big branch coming down is a subscat. So look for those. They're on many models, and uh, those are the three branches of the third part of axillary artery I want you to know. So let me continue on here. If you have a cadaver and it's face down, the scapula is on the back. So if you start looking underneath it, you know, sub, I think that's how you find it. Okay, so I put this big dotted line here because that is where the teres minor is. So as soon as you pass the inferior border of teres minor, axillary becomes brachial. Inferior border of Terry's major. Our name changes from axillary to brachial. All right, so I have a lot of things listed here. Let me ask you this question. Where does the axillary artery begin? What's the landmark? First Lateral border, first rib. Then where does it end? The inferior border is teres major. Okay, let me ask you this. Where does the brachial artery begin? The inferior border is teres major. So it's kind of one and the same. You see what's going on here? Um, let me move on from this picture. Let's get into the um, Atlas picture here. All right, look at this picture here. The axillary artery limits. Oh, I'm pointing to it, but I couldn't point to what I really wanted to point to, which was the lateral border of first rib. But I was able to point to where it ends. Identify muscle. So that's the teres major, this is lax. So you can see this um, inferior border right there. You can barely make it out. So that's why I say that's where the axillary artery ends. So no limits. I'm going to write that on the board. That you should. No limits. Limits just means where does it begin? Where does it end? Refer to this slide. Um, lateral border, first rib, inferior borders of teres major. And this slide um, reminds you that I mentioned that the axillary artery can be considered to have three parts. And I kind of mention that only because I want you to remember that the third part happens to have three branches. Anterior, posterior, circumflex, femoral, and subscapular. What I don't like about this picture is the illustrator didn't show them 
anastomosing around the surgical neck. And to my knowledge, he usually does that. Maybe in this cadaver that he was drawing, it didn't show that. Um, so let me write that as a note. We usually form an anastomosis around surgical neck. Let's remember that's a neck of the humerus. The humerus has two necks. It has the anatomical neck and the surgical neck. In anatomy, whenever you name structures, you always start with the head, then what's next? Your neck. Just like your actual head, your actual neck. In a bone, if that's the head, what I got I gotta call this ridge the neck, the anatomical neck. But this is a surgical neck because bones tend to fracture where it kind of narrows. That's what's prone to fracture. And uh, it's, it's a clinical concern because what's here? A major artery that you can rupture if you fracture it. There's also the axillary nerve that's hanging out there too. Well anyways, know those arteries. The third part of the axillary artery has three branches, and here they are again for the umpteenth time. But let's see if now you can identify this branch. It's passing in the front. Anterior complex wall. If you see it passing in the back, yeah, it's just called the posterior one, and then some scapula. Those aren't too hard. Um, if you do look at, a, look at a superficial view where you cannot see the artery, which is actually very deep, the cephalic vein, it runs in a little groove between pecs and delts. So the name of the vessel to identify is the, uh, is the cephalic vein. And it's in the shoulder region. Oh, yeah, I actually mentioned it because it's not a landmark for any of that. And actually, students do confuse it with the axillary artery and, and the axillary vein. This way, vein will drain into it. And um, so if you see it in the shoulder region between the pecs and the delts, it's the cephalic vein, not to be confused with the axillary vein. Because students think, oh, that must be the axillary. But actually, you can't see the axillary vein unless you fully abduct the arm and look in the armpit. It runs with the axillary artery. Do you see an artery running with this vein? No. Maybe that's one clue to help you remember. Oh, that's the cephalic vein, not the axillary vein. So take a look at this model in the back of the room. Cephalic vein, there's no artery that runs with it. When you say it lies in the deltal pectoral group. So what you can see in this picture here. They, they cut away part of the, uh, the clavicular head of pec major. So you can see that the, the cephalic vein, it has to pierce the fascia before it can drain into the axillary vein. That's more superficial. All right, there's a picture of the model. This um, is our green board that we have in the back of the room. And I was looking at this and I was like, well, how are students going to know where the subclavian is, where the axillary is? Because none of our landmarks are there. Uh, I, I don't see the pec muscle. I don't see the inferior border of teres major. So what could you do? So what I did was I pointed to these three branches of the third part 
of the axillary artery. So, so at least I know that's the third part of the axillary artery, so that's one thing you can tell. So then I put these lines in. If I know this is the third part, I just put a line here thinking that okay, after the third part, it's going to be brachial. I identified that as first rib. So I put a line here. So I know that before, first rib is subclavian. And also, I can see the branches of subclavian here. So I know from here to there is axillary. So you should be able to tell subclavian from axillary from brachial on that model. I mentioned the cephalic vein as a superficial vein, but there are others. So I want to go back and teach those. The superficial veins, on this model, the confusion is, well, it just looks like a big mess. But if you could like put your fingers, this is my hand, under all that, do you see any arteries with those veins? No. The superficial veins, skin deep, you can see them. Move them aside. They're the deeper arteries with the veins that are running through. So study both. Study the superficial veins as well as these deeper veins of the arm and the forearm for the upper limb vessels. So the superficial veins shown on an illustration, they're on top of the fascia that covers the muscle. So the one I just taught you is the cephalic vein that lies in the deltopectoral groove right there. Okay. But you can see this vein, it actually starts on the back of the hand, and it runs all the way up the thumb side. So let me write that down. I'll say it runs, runs up the upper limb on the thumb side. So when I look at a model, I always look for the thumb. I say, okay, I, I'm oriented. That's kind of the lateral aspect. Runs up, up limb on the thumb side, laterally. Now, the other vein that runs up the medial aspect, the pinky side, is the median, I'm sorry, this basilic vein. It's right there. But it starts all the way down by the hand. It's going to run all the way, all the way, all the way up. So look for basilic vein medially. Runs up medially. Now, the other thing is when you get a blood draw, these two veins, they anastomose in the crook of the elbow. It's called the anterior um, antecubital fossa or just cubital fossa. I'd be able to identify the median cubital vein. connects cephalic and basilic together. Located in the front of your elbow called the ACF. Antecubital fossa. Some books just call it the cubital fossa. That, that's fine. Sometimes I call it that too. This is where they do the blood draw. Um, 
So just think of it as the front of your elbow. The back of your elbow is the olecranon. The front of your elbow is the uh, is cubital fossa. So I kind of made my picture match uh, at least the same orientation. However, always look for the thumb. On the picture, if that's the thumb, what vein is this running up this side? That's the phallic. And if it, you can identify that as the pinky, then you know that's um, basilic. And then the one right in the crook of the elbow, the ACF, is median cubital vein. Now on this model here, I can, I can identify that as the thumb. So if that's the thumb, and this running up here, all the way up is the cephalic. The median cubital, I'm trying to look for it here. Oh, it's right there. Right from there to there. You can look for it and confirm it on the key. That's basilic uh, running all the way down there. In terms of superficial veins, those are the only three you gotta know. Now if you look at the artery of the arm, it's the brachial artery. Really easy. And I'm pointing to where it would be within the arm. If you extend the arm, what we had just talked about was the axillary artery ends right here. There's my landmark. Inferior border of teres major. And once the artery passes that, the um, brachial artery runs in what's called the, um, actually, I should insert the word medial there. This, is, this groove in the skin is the uh, medium bicipital groove. So let me put that on the board. Brachial artery. Lies in the median bicipital groove. Right, that's where it is, medial arm. So if, a, if you do a dissection and you get it down to the muscles and the vasculature, I'm pointing to the limits of the brachial artery. Okay. The brachial artery, it begins at the inferior border of the teres major, and it ends about an inch past the ACF, an inch past the crook of the elbow. It begins inferior border of teres major ends about an inch past the crook of the elbow. I'll just say ACF for short. When it ends, it'll terminate by bifurcating into the radial and ulnar arteries. When it ends, bifurcates. Radial artery, ulnar artery. Remember your bones of the forearm? That's them. So the arteries are named after the bones of the named after the bones of the forearm. So if you remember that, the, you won't mix them up. Okay, here's a model of the arm we have. Now that model is in the back of the room. What you got to do is you have to remove these anterior forearm muscles to view them. Anyways, just to learn them by looking at the picture. It's pretty easy. I mean, they're labeled here, but if you remember your forearm bones, I mean, that's the radius bone. Remember it has that knob head of a baseball bat? Because the radius bone radiates, right? That's how you pronate and supinate. It's the ulnar bone that's on the same side as the pinky finger. Okay, so if you just remember the names of the bones, you'll get the names of the arteries right. I have a few pictures of the cubital fossa. 
um, if you do a superficial dissection, you can even see them in the skin there. But I wanted to show you close up how the median cubital vein, they all drain up together, but the one on this side is the cephalic, and this is basilic, I'm pointing to them. But what I did was um, a deep dissection. Well, they did a deep dissection so you can see superficial to deeper on the other side of the slide there. So when you go deep, you, you cut away all the superficial veins. You cut away the fascia. And you can see the artery right there. That's where you're placing your stethoscope, the BP lab, so you can hear the heart sounds, or excuse me, hear the uh, blood pressure sounds, the crop cough sounds. Okay, well, anyways, right there, that's where they branch. That's where the brachial artery ends and bifurcates into the uh, radial and ulnar arteries. So then when I call the distal forearm, I just want you to identify those two. If I show you this picture, is that thumb or pinky? You can't even see the fingers, but could you tell? What do you think, thumb or pinky? This is the pinky side, that's the thumb side. If this is the thumb side, remember, rad, what's that? Radial. And then ulnar, that's it, that's all you gotta know. All right, well, let's take a break. Uh, when you come back, we'll um, study the models, okay? Know that on Wednesday, I, I do wanna um, start lecturing on blood. I'll try to give you another two hours of study. So come back in about 15 minutes. You just have time to study the models.